Talking of madness, um, here's one. Here's a follow-up to the story we broke last year. The fact that the regulatory body that administers the yearly refresher courses for real estate agents last year decided that for no goddamn good apparent reason, real estate agents are going to have to learn about karakiras and certain things about Maori spirituality. Well, most real estate agents complied and did, I think, the few hours online learning that had to be done, even though it was completely irrelevant to them. And But one, uh, one real estate agent is holding out and risking losing her job and livelihood by saying, I'm not going to be compelled to do this by the real estate uh, authority. And the real estate authority, of course, came up with the bullshit excuse that as a government statutory agency, they had to act in keeping with the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, which we want to have a national debate on, but the wokesters don't. Well, if you thought that was bad, if you thought compulsory training, cultural Maori cultural training was bad for real estate agents, um, and I've already revealed on this program how all university students are going to have to do some form of this. Amongst that, and this is just out of the New Zealand Council of Legal Education, which is the equivalent, I guess, of the real estate, the statutory body that governs the real estate agents. This is the statutory body that sets parameters and curricula for legal study in New Zealand. New tikanga Māori requirements. From January the 1st of 2025, the New Zealand legal education curriculum will include requirements for the teaching and assessment of te, te, um, te God, what is it? Tikanga Māori, Māori and Māori laws and philosophies. How wonderful. Well, I read that. And in the woke sort of wave that has been going through our tertiary institutions, maybe it didn't surprise me. But I did wonder what Māori laws are and what Māori philosophy is and what the hell that's got to do with the letter of the law. And I noticed someone had done some thinking and writing on this was uh, King's Counsel Gary Judd, a distinguished uh, lawyer and distinguished New Zealand businessman, um, and I thought we'd get Gary on the program this morning to talk about this. Gary, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. All right. Is this... Are there, in one's legal training, uh, tertiary legal training, uh, are there any other things that you have to learn as a lawyer that are compulsory for you becoming a lawyer in terms of courses you have to sit? Yes, there are a series of subjects um, which are real law, um, starting off with the legal system, which is where you sort of learn about the general structure um, of the uh, of of the uh, leg of the system, and things like contracts, torts, criminal law, all things which you would expect that lawyers would necessarily have to know yeah. in order to carry on their... Practical base knowledge. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Well, then, can you tell me what's practical and base about tikanga Māori, what Māori law is, and how Māori philosophy might, in a legal sense, apply to the law in New Zealand? Well, in my view... Um, and as you say, I have written about this. Um, the idea that tikanga is law is, quite frankly, nonsense. Because tikanga is um, a set of values. Uh, in, in the, when the Supreme Court opined on this matter in the Alice Continuance case, they attached to their judgment a so-called statement of tikanga uh, and part of that statement includes a section here of the nature of tikanga, and it starts off by saying that tikanga uh, grew out of the land, grew out of our whewa, the land, and uh, that in some traditions, the uh, it, it was it was here uh, when Kupaya arrived, 
Um, what, so, some I mean, inherent the, justice system sitting in the soil of New Zealand? Exactly. Ooh. And and this is why, you know, it is, in fact, more in the nature of a religion uh, than, uh, than anything else. I mean, it's really comparable to the relig- you know, religious precepts such as um, the... Uh, the Holy Trinity, you know, we Christians, uh, or, or some, or most probably, uh, you uh, have the idea that there is a, a, a three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, and all religions have that sort of thing. And Te Maori is in the same category, in my view. It's a superstition or a semi-quasi-religious belief. Yeah, that's that's okay. That, that's my Why opinion. would you make it compulsory for lawyers in New Zealand to learn about a semi-religious, well, quasi-religious belief system? Well, to my mind, there is no good reason, uh, but that's what the legal, the Council uh, for Legal Education has decreed. Now, it's, it's worth uh, noting that the Council for Legal Education comprises, according to the statute, two judges of the High Court nominated by the Chief Justice, a District Court judge nominated by the Chief District Court judge, five members nominated by the Council of the New Zealand Law Society, uh, the Dean of the Faculty of, or School of Law of each of the uh, universities, uh, and two members nominated by the Council of the New Zealand Law Students Association, plus one member not being a practitioner or a law student nominated by the Ministry of Justice. Now, those are the people who have decided that um, uh, this should be... So basically our judiciary? Um, judiciary and the Law Society nominees. Um, and... I, you, you and I spoke last year about the way in which the New Zealand Law Society was endeavouring to uh, uh, persuade the government to enact laws which would um, require lawyers in some way to be subject to the principles of the Treaty, treaty of Waitangi. Waitangi. Yeah. So you can be fairly certain that the... This is all part uh, of that. The, 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 the members of the Council nominated by the Council of New Zealand Law Society uh, are going to be right on um, with this sort of thing. And of course, so far as judges are concerned, what we've seen um, over the last few years is a move towards uh, claiming that te um is law and that it should be taken into account uh, or not taken into account, but it should in fact form part of the body of New Zealand law. And that's happened uh, most explicitly with the Peter Ellis uh, continuance case um, where the judges... Um, uh, one of whom said that it was the place of the Supreme Court to, and I quote, declare the law, uh, d- declared that Tikanga was the first law of New Zealand. And, well, that's poppycock, uh, Gary. I, I agree with you. But, uh, but that's what was said. And not only do we have this uh, from the judiciary, but... We also, of course, have it from Parliament because successive governments, and in particular the last one, um, have introduced tikanga into all sorts of uh, legislation. So, in fact, in some ways, I suppose you can't blame the judges too much um, if Parliament has um, introduced this notion into legislation. Now... Don't get me wrong, wrong. the tikanga, like um, other religions, can actually lead to uh, to genuine laws, and that is where they they it, they create uh, the laws. The uh, uh, these belief systems result in customs where people behave yeah. in a sort of particular way, and they do so yeah. for a sufficiently long time for the courts to say, okay, well, this is... And law exists 
and is practised and is meted out in the context of a society, right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. 